video is made possible thanks to our sponsor, Loot Crate. If you haven't heard of Loot Crate, it's basically a service where every month they send you an assortment of unique toys and collectibles, usually centered around the theme of technology, gaming, and general geek culture. If you want to support our show and make videos like this possible, go to lootcrate.com slash mwtech and enter mwtech on the coupon code to get an awesome discount. By doing this, not only are you helping us out greatly, but you're making videos like this possible. Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Watch, and in this video, we'll be doing a direct head-to-head -head laptop comparison between the new Dell XPS 13, the 2015 edition, versus the 13.3-inch MacBook Air from 2014. Now, both of these computers are probably one of the thinnest and lightest Ultrabooks you can get in the market. So what we're going to do is take a look at the advantages and disadvantages that each notebook presents and see which one is the ultimate Ultrabook. <laughs> Now side by side, one of the impressive things about the XPS 13 is its overall compact form factor. Because it has that kind of bezel-less display, it uh, really demonstrates how small a 13.3 inch notebook can be compared to a notebook that many consider to be the best Ultrabook in terms of form factor and overall design. Now side by side, you can see that the XPS 13 is smaller both in terms of width and height compared to the MacBook Air, which is nice to see. Now taking a look at the thickness differences between these two, Dell mentions on their website that the XPS 13 is around 9 millimeters at its thinnest portion and about 15 millimeters at its thickest portion. Now in real life when you take a caliper and measure uh, the thickest portion of the XPS 13 you'll notice that's around 17 millimeters and that's pretty much identical to the thickest point on the MacBook Air which is also 17 millimeters. Now if you close both of these notebooks and line them up side by side you can notice that the XPS 13 is slightly higher than the MacBook Air and that's primarily because the feet on the XPS elevate the computer a little bit higher than the feet on the MacBook Air, up to 20 millimeters in fact. And that's a pretty big difference compared to the MacBook Air, which measures about 18 millimeters from the table to its highest point. Now, in terms of weight, it really depends on which version of the XPS you have. If you get the full 1080p version, it measures about 2.6 pounds. But if you get the version that we have, which has the Quad HD display, it's going to be around 2.8 pounds. Now, in terms of build material, both are fantastically made and designed. The MacBook Air chassis is made at 100% aluminum and it has an excellent overall fit and finish versus the Dell XPS has a aluminum uh, lid and a back plate but the uh, middle portion is made out of real carbon fiber. It's not as high grade as uh, automotive carbon fiber or the stuff you see in airplanes but it's carbon fiber nonetheless and it's going to add a lot of strength and rigidity alongside saving some weight as well. Now moving on in terms of inputs and outputs. The Dell XPS 13 has a plethora of different options. We have a two USB 3.0 connection. We have one mini DisplayPort connection that has the capability to support a 4K monitor at 3840 by 2160. It has one SD card slot reader as well as one microphone and headphone jack. On the MacBook Air, we have two USB 3.0 connections, same thing as the Dell, but we have a Thunderbolt connection instead of a mini DisplayPort connection, and we have a one full size SD card reader as well as a headphone jack. Now, the one peculiar thing about the XPS 13 is its placement of the web webcam. Since it has such a thin bezel, there's no real room to put a webcam at the top portion of the screen. So it's located at the bottom of the display and uh, as a result, it really shows a unflattering angle that looks right up your nose versus the 720p camera on the MacBook Air is nicely placed in the center and has uh, none of those kind of defects. Now taking a look at the keyboard on the XPS 13 compared to the one on the MacBook, you can see that they're pretty similar in terms of overall design at first glance. They're both fully backlit and have a fairly similar key configuration. But after several days of usage, I did determine that there is a pretty big difference to these seemingly similar keyboards. Firstly, the ridge between the keys themselves and the side portion of the notebook is about two to three millimeters deeper on the MacBook keyboard compared to the XPS keyboard. And what that importantly allows is more travel on the keys themselves, which is gonna give you a little bit more of a springier recoil effect when pressing individual keys. And I think that's pretty important when you have such a low profile keyboard to begin with. In terms of the key size and space, 
casing. I think both of them are fairly similar with the exception that the MacBook has a slightly longer backspace button with a better defined arrow keys as well. Now in terms of the trackpad, both of them are utilizing a glass trackpad that has a really nice kind of frictionless travel and they both feel very responsive and easy to use. Now there is a slight difference in terms of size. Basically they both measure about 10.4 centimeters in terms of width, but in terms of height, the MacBook trackpad is a little bit taller at 7.5 centimeters versus about 5.8 centimeters on the XPS. Now let's talk about the display. At center stage, one of the big highlights on the new Dell XPS is certainly that glorious QHD display that's also touchscreen. It has a glossy overall finish and it has a native resolution of 3200 by 1800 and it's something Dell calls the infinity display and certainly that's a good title for it because basically with those thin overall bezels, it kind of looks the, like the display is floating right above the laptop and with a PPI count of about 276, it's certainly a lot higher than the 127 PPI count that we have on the 13.3 edition of the MacBook Air, which by the way has a native resolution of 1440 by 900. And in terms of the overall clarity that you get between these two displays, certainly there's no competition. The display on the XPS 13 is head and shoulders beyond the display that we have on the 13 inch Air. But uh, generally speaking, there's nothing really wrong with the 13.3 inch display on the MacBook Air. Certainly a higher resolution would be nice, but basically you can definitely see that text and overall images and watching 4K content is really quite sensational on that Quad HD display that we find on the XPS and is one of the best laptop displays that I have ever come across. Now before I praise the display on the XPS 13 too much, let's go ahead and take a look at the external speaker sound coming out of both of the external speakers on these two notebooks. That way you can hear the difference for yourself and see what sounds better to you. Now before we get into the other half of this comparison, I'd like to take the time to thank our sponsor Loot Crate for making this video possible. If you don't know what Loot Crate is, it's basically a service where every month you receive an assortment of unique toys and collectibles that are centered around a particular type of theme based on technology, gaming, and general geek culture. This month's crate is dedicated to all the fun and fantastic games that we love to play, from tabletop to video, board games, card games, RPGs, desk toys, and much more. Here's how it works, Loot Crate sends you every month a crate that's worth over $40 for only $13.95 plus shipping and handling. If you sign up for multiple months, they cut you out an even better deal, which is pretty awesome. And if you want to try this out, go to lootcrate.com slash mwtech and make sure to enter mwtech as a coupon code to get an added discount. And by doing that, not only are you helping us out greatly, but you're also making videos like this possible. And next, we're going to take a look at the internal specifications on both of these two Ultrabook computers. On the XPS 13, we have the brand new Broadwell 5th generation Core i5 dual core processor that's clocked about 2.2 gigahertz and it can boost up to 2.7 gigahertz. In terms of RAM, we have 8 gigabytes of DDR3. Unfortunately, we can't upgrade to 16 gigabytes, but 8 gigabytes is the maximum, even if you get the higher end model, which is really quite unfortunate. On the MacBook Air side, uh, the 2014 edition has a dual core processor that's clocked about 1.4 gigahertz and it can turbo up to 2.7 gigahertz. And just to benchmark the performance differences between these two computers, we're going to take a look at Cinebench, which is going to specifically measure our CPU performance. And basically the results showed that the XPS 13 has a higher overall score of 249 points versus about 225 points on the MacBook Air. And moving along to my Geekbench 3's results, again, higher overall score, both in terms of the multi-core score and the single core score on the XPS 13, mainly because the uh, CPU architecture is fairly similar. Obviously we have the newer generation on the XPS, but it's also clocked a lot higher as well. Now in terms of the graphical performance of both these two computers, since they're using very similar internal architecture, you're going to see similar graphical performance results. If you take a look at our Heaven benchmark, you can see over here that the XPS 13 got about 20.5 average frames per second, and we got about 20.7 average frames per second on our uh, MacBook Air, and they're both set to uh, 1280 by 720 medium quality settings with no anti-aliasing. So 
So they're pretty much identical in terms of their graphical capabilities. Now the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at how much heat both computers emit after a heavy duty usage. We're going to basically run Unigen's Heaven benchmark for around 15 minutes and then I'm going to simply take a temperature readout of the bottom of the computers at the center point. And basically after 15 minutes the uh, XPS 13 topped around 95 degrees Fahrenheit versus about 88 degrees Fahrenheit on the MacBook Air which is definitely impressive to see. Now in terms of fan noise the loudest the XPS 13 got was around 53 decibels and the MacBook surprisingly was a little bit louder at 56 decibels after running the Heaven benchmark for around 15 minutes. So a little bit quieter fan noise overall on the XPS 13 which is interesting to see. Now moving forward we're going to take a look at the SSD performance on both these two computers. Now the uh, Dell comes with a 128 gigabyte on its stock configuration. You can upgrade it to a 256 if you so desire but on the MacBook Air you can get a 128 gigabyte version on the 13 inch edition and you can upgrade it to 512 gigabytes if you so desire. Now in order to determine the real life read and write performance of both these two SSDs we're going to actually do a real world test. We're going to copy this 932 a video file from our desktop to our videos folder and all we're going to do is just measure the time it takes for that file to completely transfer over on both computers. And the results show that it took about 4.36 seconds on the MacBook Air versus about 6.2 seconds on the XPS 13. And if we take the file size of 932 and divide it by the time it took each computer, we get a score of about 213.76 megabytes per second on the MacBook Air and about 150.32 megabytes per second on the XPS 13. So certainly faster read and write performance on our MacBook Air compared to the XPS. In terms of connectivity, both have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, that's dual band capabilities for both 2.5 and 5 gigahertz frequencies, and we have Bluetooth 4.0 on both computers. Now the last thing that we're going to talk about is the overall battery performance out of both of these two computers. And basically my usage habit after a couple of days of using the XPS 13, I basically made sure that both computers were set to about 40% brightness, about 100 nits, and uh, the web browsing was fairly normal in terms of just reading different articles and working on my Google Docs and I typically have about four to eight tabs at a time and occasionally I listen to some music then and now again and watch about 45 minutes to an hour worth of YouTube videos Then I try to maintain as consistent a user profile as possible across both computers to give you a representative score and after a couple of days of uh, basically discharging and recharging I got an average kind of a usage rate on the Dell XPS about eight hours and 52 minutes almost nine hours and about 12 hours, three minutes on the MacBook Air. And there is no question about it. The MacBook Air is an absolute beast when it comes to battery life. Keep in mind, if you do get the full HD version of the XPS, you do get about two and a half hours more uh, on average battery life compared uh, to the quad HD display that we have on here. So uh, generally speaking, definitely better overall battery performance on the MacBook Air. And it's something that a lot of computers have a tough time trying to match. But on that, guys, that's really it. If you have any specific questions about anything, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. And also let me know what you guys think. Love to hear all your thoughts and opinions. And if you're interested in any one of these products, check out the Amazon link below. And if you're ever shopping on Amazon, make sure to use our Amazon portal. And that way we get a little bit of kickback and it doesn't cost you anything and you help support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Take care. This video was made possible thanks to Loot Crate. If you're interested in Loot Crate, go to lootcrate.com slash MWTech and enter MWTech in the coupon code. And if you do that, not only will you get an awesome discount, but you're helping us greatly to support the channel and to make videos like this possible. <laughs>